And in this episode of the Happy Also Podcast, we have on Mr. Sean Fallsgraf, who is a certified public accountant. He is also the founder and CEO of Blue Peak Financial. And today he's talking about the five most underutilized business deductions. We're going to be diving into this episode of the Happy Also Podcast. Do you want blissful balance in your personal and professional life? Great. What's up, guys? My name is Kerry Jack, and I want to help you happy hustle, a life you love, one full of passion, purpose, and positive impact. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, a professional model slash actor, a digital marketing specialist, a podcast host, author, a biohacker, an eco-warrior, a martial artist, a hippie cowboy, and a humanitarian. My goal is to educate, inspire, and entertain you to live a life of passion, purpose, and positive impact. It is time to happy hustle your dream reality. Yee yee! All right, Mr. Sean Fallsgraf, welcome back to the Happy Hustle Podcast, my brother. I am super stoked to have you on the mic. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, man. It's going to be a fun one. I mean, you're a certified public accountant. You are the founder of Blue Peak Financial. You are also a former agile project management consultant for not only a Fortune 100 company, but multiple Fortune 500 companies. And you are talking to us today about the five most underutilized business deductions. And you are also something that I think is very important to mention to the happy hustlers. You are also a happy hustler and you're my accountant and CPA, and you help with all the back end decisions for our business. So this is something mm-hmm. that I know that I lack in when it comes to financials and forecasting and bookkeeping and doing all the numbers. I'm definitely more of like a visionary entrepreneur. And when it comes to the nitty gritty details, that's not my thing. And that's why I work with people like Sean to actually focus on what I'm best at and outsource the rest. Right. So today we're talking about the five most underutilized business deductions, because this is something that can save you a lot of money when it comes tax time. And this is something that really uh, was a little bit shocking almost. I guess that's the best word. When you, you, when you started to go through my mm-hmm. uh, business deductions, I was like, gosh, oh, we could write that off. We could do this. We could do that. So right. first of all, give, give us a little bit of, um, you know, maybe fill in the holes, let's say, of, of where I missed in terms of your intro. What got you into you know, the financial game. And, um, yeah, let's just start there. Sure. Yeah. So, um, I'm currently running, uh, my own business. So blue peak financial, we, uh, we provide proactive tax services, um, to help you mitigate taxes and build wealth. And I think the key word there is proactive. So we want to get eyes on your taxes, get a look before your end, because after your end, it's already too late. So yeah. want to make sure we're, we're maximizing uh, your tax savings. Second is um, a staff alternative. So we come in, we manage your books, we manage your payroll, we help with budgeting, we help with forecasting. We are your finance department. So we're here to help you. Uh, we're on the journey with you. And ultimately, uh, we want to set you up with the cleanest financials so you can make the best decisions for your business. And then lastly, uh, keep you compliant, right? So the last thing you want to worry about is the, the big monkey on your back worrying, you know, what's the IRS going to say? We keep you in line with regulators, uh, with the IRS and, and, and others. So that's ultimately what we do here at Blue Peak Financial. And um, today we're going to talk about the five most underutilized business deductions. And I think, Carrie, uh, we can go back to when we first, uh, we first started working together and, you know, First is taking a look at, okay, what transactions do we have visibility to and where are they running through? So the first thing you and I did was say, hey, okay, we have personal here, we have business here. Now let's let's kind of take a look and start to dig into what can we put on the business side versus what is personal. And so ultimately what a business deduction is, is it's a cost associated with your business. So as you start to develop and, and grow, we want to push expenses into the business bucket. And the way that we do that is through some of these five most underutilized business deductions. The first one uh, we're gonna talk about is the travel deduction. So um, when we talk about travel, one of the things that we wanna do is associate your lifestyle 
with your business. So if you're taking a trip, let's think about how you can leverage that trip for your business. So if you're going to visit a friend, maybe there's a conference that we can uh, look into having you do while you're there. Maybe there's a prospective client that you can talk to. Um, ultimately, you want to associate the travel in your life with your business and that's how you move your your everyday lifestyle into your business and take those as write-offs. And so when, when you take a, a business deduction or a write-off, that, that's 30% savings right there at, at, for money that you would have spent and, uh, otherwise. So yep. um, some, some, some ideas here on how you might introduce travel deductions into your everyday life uh, is you hold an annual company meeting. Uh, so this can be a board of advisors, maybe a team of, of mentors that you have will go on a trip um, that trip is a business write-off, but make sure that you're talking about your business and you're holding an actual annual company meeting. Um, you could visit a client to cultivate a relationship. Uh, visit a vendor. So maybe you have a very important vendor that you want to work on payment terms with. Um, you know, pay them a visit. Uh, you could attend a conference or a workshop. Uh, or for example, if you're in the real estate industry, maybe you're looking at a rental property, maybe you're checking out a new uh, uh, potential prospecting a new area that you'd like to invest in. Those are all ways that you can incorporate the travel of your everyday life into your business and optimize and maximize your deductions. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I mean, the, the travel deductions are one of my favorite really, because, you know, I really enjoy traveling. I think traveling to new places, meeting new people, experiences, different food, culture, etc. And then all the while allowing it to be a write-off where you can actually put that expense against your income at the end of the year. It's very important to do this, obviously, ethically and also with clear documentation. Um, but it is a really great write-off, right? Just having those travel mm -hmm. expenses. So um, this is something I... I just want to say something that was helpful for me, Sean, that you helped me was getting a travel business credit card, right? So just like my travel business credit card is what I use for travel and I get extra points. I personally use Capital One's Venture uh, card because it has like 5%, you know, cash back and a bunch of perks and points and all sorts of stuff. So that's just a little, you know happy hustle hack will you when it comes to your travel expenses separating them even using a separate credit card uh, can really help and one that gets you points back right i just used utilized a couple um your months worth of points to buy steph and i new flights right so like you these points do add up and why not get cash back on your money um let's talk about the second most underutilized business deduction so the second business deduction we're going to talk about is uh, meals and entertainment. And this is uh, critically important for this year. So, so listen up with this one. In 2021 and 2022, meals purchased at a restaurant are 100% deductible. So usually it's 50% deductible, but the IRS for this year uh, and, and the year prior, they're allowing you to deduct 100% of those, those meals purchased at a restaurant. So it has to be a restaurant. Um, so this is key and this is critical for 2022. So as you're getting ready for your taxes, make sure that you're you're kind of going through and fine combing all of the meals that would apply to your business. Now, um, meals that apply to your business are prospecting with a potential client. Uh, it could be dinner while traveling. So kind of feeds back into the first one if you're eating dinner while you're traveling. Also, this could be meals with employees, um, club meetings, or you know, generally buying food for your employees. And then also, maybe you have a year-end party or a marketing presentation or something like that. Those are all deductible meals. And um, one thing to point out in a, in a quick tip here, you, it's always best practice to keep your receipts for, for meals, uh, generally in your business. Um, but today's day and age, with everything being electronic, one of the, the key ways that you can actually track this is if you have a meal with a client, book it on your calendar. So put that on your calendar and say, I had a meal with Carrie. 
and in the notes of the of the meal say hey you know we talked about this this and this just give like a brief little explanation as to what you discussed at the meal and let that serve as your receipt or your proof that you had a meal with a prospect and client and then at year end you can go through and say you know any anything that i tagged for meals in my calendar like here's all my support and all my receipts and you know if the irs were ever to come you would be able to substantiate uh, and support that so uh, just a little mm. tip for meals and entertainment yeah that's that's a great little tip because you know god forbid you do get audited they're gonna want documentation on all of these different write-offs and why not just make it a part of what you're already doing with your calendar just putting into the notes what you talked about um that is actually something i definitely need to start doing so uh thanks for bringing that one up let's talk about the third <laughs> most underutilized business deduction yeah okay so the next one is uh technology costs uh and this is this is usually one of my my favorite areas when i'm working with a new client is let's let's let me understand your business and start asking you questions. Did you potentially buy a new laptop? Did you buy a new printer? So I'm looking for things that are our business write-offs. Did you buy an iPad, um, new camera, video camera, lighting for a studio, microphone, anything for you know podcast relating expenses, um, a TV monitor, projector, um, or did you buy a coffee maker, uh, a Google watch or an Apple watch? So these are all things that you can associate with your business that you use every day in your business and we should be, make sure that we're, we're maximizing that business deduction so think you know a good way to do this maybe if you're if you're just starting out is take a look at your bank statements for uh the last year and see all the purchases that you made at um best buy at apple at uh even target you know start to look at like hey like what did i buy and is there anything in there that i could write off for for 2022 that i'm using in my business um mm. so yeah technology is a, is a great area and a great find for for business deductions yeah and to that point i mean you know i purchased a new like mac uh desktop that that seems intuitive to write it off but what about like like your phone bill like your uh what about even like your i don't maybe could you go as far as, as say netflix for re research purposes if you're in like the entertainment world like i don't know where does the where's the line sean <laughs> where's the line yeah so you know so with the with the phone bill uh we'll start there so yes you can write off your phone bill um usually so the way the irs will look at it is you should have um, your cell phone, which you use for business, but have a sort of a landline or a home line that you could say is, hey, this is my personal line. Um, and then everything else is done on your cell phone, including your, your cell phone itself and your monthly um, cell phone bill is all written off to the business because you have another line that you can access for, for home calls, for your personal calls. So you just wanna make sure that you have something else that you can say, hey, all this is for business and then I have my landline for, for my personal calls. And then, so on the Netflix, uh, it would depend, I guess, on your business, right? We'd have we'd have to get into a detailed conversation, but that's you know, that's some of the interesting parts about finding deductions for you is let's talk about your business and let's take a position on what can be associated for your business and, and what we should not. Um, but but great questions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think again, going back to just being ethically aggressive when it comes to your deductions, when it comes to your, your financials in general and your tax savings. But again, you have to be able to substantiate whatever you do right off. And so that's where yeah. it comes into play. Like for me being, you know, in many regards, a media company with the Happy Hustle, since we do put out a lot of content, I bet you we could justify Netflix under research, you know, or something like that. Cause that's really what I use it for. I don't watch a lot of like crap entertainment on there. It's more docu documentaries and stuff like that. So who knows? Maybe we'll talk about yeah. that. Anyway, let's that's, hear I mean, that's number exactly four. right, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, it's all about taking a position, understanding your business and taking a position on what you use it for. So that's exactly right. I like, I like the way you, you phrased that. Um, so home office deduction is our next deduction. Um, so 
ultimately with a home office deduction you are you first you need to make sure that you meet the requirements for a home office office deduction and um, lately there's a, a new administrative office tax court ruling that lets pretty much anything associated with administrative work with your business even if your primary office is somewhere else it allows you to take this home office deduction which is kind of a new thing um, but it, it actually helps with the home office deduction um, so two criteria that you need for the home office deduction is that it's um, the the room or the area of your house is used regularly and exclusively for for business for your business mm. and um, yeah that, that's pretty much the main one it used to be principal place of business as well but since that new administrative office court ruling it, it allows a little bit more flexibility in that area and then ultimately all you're doing with the business the home office deduction is your um, seeing how much square footage is that office space compared relatively to the entire space of your home and then you get to you know divide that room by the total square feet and then you can allocate either a simplified method which is five dollars every square foot or you can take actual expenses which would include your your mortgage payment your utilities um, any leasehold improvements on your property and then you would figure out which one's higher and then you want to take the higher one so hmm. okay. that's home office yeah yeah and i think some people do get afraid to uh write off their home office sometimes i hear with fellow entrepreneurs that they get they're reluctant to take advantage of some of these business deductions but truly i just want to say to all the happy hustlers out there like th these deductions are written in the tax code for you to utilize and as long as you're utilizing them within the tax code you can write them off with confidence and also, again, just going back to documentation, as long as you have the documentation to substantiate any of these, it, it's going to um, give you that confidence to substantiate, God forbid, if an audit happens. So just really important to take advantage of these and, and do so with confidence. Let's hear the fifth most underutilized business deduction. So the fifth deduction is auto expenses, and by auto expenses, ultimately we're talking about your vehicle. Um, so with the vehicle deduction, um, we're looking at SUVs, trucks, vans, anything over 6,000 pounds or greater can actually be expensed through what's called a 179 um, deduction, and that's actually going to take the entire value of that vehicle and write it off towards your business. If, you, if you're not um, with an SUV truck or van, then you can take a um, regular mileage deduction, which either is a standard deduction um, of, it varies every year, but it's about 52 to 55 cents per mile. So make sure that you're tracking the mileage for your business. This is miles to go visit a client. This is miles that you're driving um, with anything associated with your, your your business. So it is very business specific, but think anything that you, that you might um, be driving around that would associate with what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, some other things that might fall into this bucket as well is if you have a leased vehicle, um, you're paying for gas, you're paying for all these things, you can, you can deduct the actual expenses at a pro-rated basis towards how much you're using your vehicle for business versus how much you're using it for your personal use. So mm. that's the okay. auto deduction, another area which is underutilized as well. Yeah, what I heard is I need to buy a bigger truck that weighs over 6,000 pounds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, because I mean, I know a lot of people do that. They buy like the Mercedes, whatever, uh, G wagon. Cause that's just over 6,000 pounds, you know? And I, I think if you're, if you're not driving something, you know, over 6,000 pounds, you can take the, the mileage deduction, which I've done with past vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. again, you know, you just have to do what's best for you, but take advantage of these business deductions, fam. This is why, you know, I love bringing Sean on. And why I think it's so important is because we spend all this time thinking about how to spread our message, how to grow our impact, how to make more money. And we, we very rarely talk about how to actually keep the money we make, right? This is maybe a conversation at the end of the year. And it's like a, for a day with your, with your accountant, if, if you're in the majority of 
uh, entrepreneurs and, and, you know, professionals out there. But if you want to actually keep more of the money you make, this needs to be a conversation that happens far more regularly. And, you know, Sean and I actually do quarterly reviews. We have monthly check-ins and we're constantly touching base. So then the end of the year comes around and we're not, oh, damn, we should have done this, this, and that. No, that's why Sean with Blue Peak is doing proactive tax strategies to actually save you money. And I think it's just, again, really imperative for you to be thinking about how much of the money you actually keep and how much more you could keep if you utilize some of these business deductions and some of these strategies. So Sean, I know you have just a bonus for all the happy hustlers when it comes to, you know, you, you, you got a lot of business deductions that we could have went into. You did some of the, the, you know, the most underutilized, but just give us the bonus one just in case, uh, you know, everyone's like, Hey, I've, I've done all these. Well, what's that uh, extra special one? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the extra special one is actually probably the most underutilized strategy out of them all. And it's paying a family member to help you in your business. And the way that you can strategize this deduction, of course, the employee or the family member that you're paying actually has to do work for your business. So don't fudge on that one. Make sure that they're doing work. But if it's a child under 18 and you pay them up to the standard deduction amount, which is about 12,500, give or take the year, that is a write-off for your business. And because it's under the standard deduction, you're not paying any taxes on it. So it's ultimately a write-off up to that amount. So make sure yep. this is legitimate. Don't you know try to squeeze by on anything, um, just making something up. Um, but consider paying family members or children and having them help you with your business. It's a great way to get them involved, to teach them life skills, but also there's tax advantages associated with it. So that's the, the bonus nugget here. Um, consider it, I think it's a, a really great way to get your kids involved and also maximize your business deductions. Yeah, that's that's a great one. You could pay your spouse, right? You could pay your kids, you mm -hmm. could pay your mom, dad, you know, brother, sister. There's a lot here. And this is something when I heard about it, I was like, oh damn. What a, what a great strategy because you're already mm -hmm. probably paying them in many regards or paying for some of their stuff because they're your family and you love them. But why not have it go against your business income? And yeah, really great strategy there, Sean. So do a recap just for all the happy hustlers in terms of those six underutilized business strategy or business deductions, just so everyone can get them all in one succinct sound bite. Sure. Yeah. So the first is travel deduction. The next one is meals and entertainment, technology and telephone costs. We have the home office deduction, auto expenses, and last but not least, paying a family member or a child that helps in your business. So that's mm. six of the most underutilized business deductions. I love it. And that's how you really start to happy hustle a life that you love and keep more of the money that you're actually making. I am so excited to share with you the latest Montana Mastermind Epic Adventure. Now, I will say, due to many requests, we are doing a winter edition of the Montana Mastermind Epic Adventures. This means if you want to come skiing and snowboarding in Montana this upcoming March 2023, you can apply to come and kick it with me in person, shred some pow pow, and just be around a like-minded, happy, hustling, badass entrepreneurs who are all making over six figures, who are heart-centered, and who actually care about infusing passion, purpose, and a positive impact into their daily existence. We have so many cool things lined up. In addition to just skiing and snowboarding on amazing mountain uh, Montana runs, we are going to be soaking at thermal hot springs. We are going to be doing some ice fishing and hiking and campfires and all sorts of cool activities. We're staying at a mountain mansion that is absolutely stunning. We have a professional chef who's going to be cooking up delicious, uh, just amazing meals. 
and we have business masterminding going on where we're going to just work through your adversities and your challenges, as well as share other people's wins and your wins so that we can all learn from the collective wisdom, just having fun, mixing business with pleasure, all in the beautiful Montana wilderness. I got to say, I love me some masterminds and this one is going to be epic. So if you want in, apply today at kerryjack.com forward slash Montana. And I will say spots are very limited. We cannot take very many people in this winter edition. It's already got a lot of interest and a lot of people signed up um, and it's going to be a small intimate gathering. So if you want in, jump on it before 2023 ends or before 2023 starts uh, rather. So Jump on it, carryjack.com forward slash Montana, and I hope to see you on the slopes in Montana soon. Peace and love, y'all. Let's get back to this episode. So, fam, mm-hmm. take action on these strategies and these deductions. Be very proactive with your taxes. Don't wait till the end of the year. I used to do that. It's there's it's not beneficial in the long run. Talk to your tax professional or someone like Sean and that leads me to the point Sean is actually has a very generous offer for all the happy hustlers out there. Sean, tell us what you're offering for everyone out there watching and listening. Yeah. So anybody interested in proactive tax planning, that's getting in front and ahead in your taxes. Anybody who's looking for a staff alternative to help them with their books, anybody who's looking to stay compliant, come uh, to the blue peak financial that's B L U E. F I N C I A L, uh, blue, blue peak And you can schedule a free consultation. That'll be 30 minutes with me. And we will deep dive into your, your taxes. We'll look to uh, see if it'd be a good fit for us to work together. Um, and come, I'd, I'd love to, to chat with you and, and, um, see if I can find you some savings here. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Take action on this guys go to bluepeakfinancial.com and just book a call with him and actually let him help you deep dive into what you got going on and where potentially you're missing opportunities to save yourself and your business money and if you want to really happy hustle you got to have your finances on on point that's just the truth and this is something i'm focusing more and more on in 2023 and it's something that i really i think you need to focus on as well so take action that's bluepeakfinancial.com sean any final call to action where you know you could just tell the happy hustlers maybe something that you wish you knew or a final you know just statement that can really bring us home I think the key is it might be scary to look at the finances. Maybe you're in a position where you haven't um, taken charge of those finances. It's not as scary as you think. Let's take a look. Let's see where you're at. And ultimately, I want to take something that may be a weakness and turn it into a strength. I want your finances to be a place where you can go to help you make decisions. So let's leverage the tools that we have. Let's um, take charge. It's almost 2023, so I'd say uh, let's do it quickly. Um, you know, <laughs> the year end is upon us. So um, with that, yeah, I- I'd love to chat with you. So um, yeah, awesome, guys. BluePeakFinancial.com. Check it out. And then one more thing I would say too is just look at your your right now your your actual um, taxes from 2021 and see which of these business deductions you're missing. Like do a little bit of an audit on yourself and your actual business currently, and then you could be proactive for the year to come, 2022 and 2023 and beyond. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening. We appreciate it. Sean, you are the man. Keep happy hustling, brother. And thank you all again. Peace and love. Peace and love.